dozen or so years ago, they published the sequence of the human genome. And those of us who are microbiologists were saying, ah, they only got just a really small smidge of the human body, the human genome. And that the rest of it is the human microbiome, which is a collection of organisms that outnumbers the human cells by 100 to 1. We like to think of it as a community, and that there are these communities of bacteria all over the human body. So, you know, our skin, our mouth, our gut um, are all covered in bacteria. And instead of being grossed out by this, uh, people need to be excited about that because these are the organisms that keep us healthy. So the Human Microbiome Project goal was to characterize the composition and function of the bacteria that live on and in the human body. And then to understand how changes in that community of bacteria affects human health. The main part of the project was to sample 300 people, 150 people from Houston and 150 people from St. Louis at two or three times over the course of two years. And they sampled them at 18 different parts of their body. And so the analysis was really, to some extent, crowdsourced to the scientific community to analyze. One of the really cool things about the microbiome in this study was that these people were very healthy, but they were all very different from each other. And so one of the cool things about the human microbiome is the community that you have really on any body site is your community and that well, we think it's kind of the sum total of your genetics, your diet, your behaviors, how you were born, how you were fed as an infant, and that will stay with you forever. And to the point where my community is more like I will be 10 years from now than I will ever be like anybody else. And so in many ways, it really is a fingerprint. There's a European consortium called MetaHit uh, that a couple years ago published a paper looking at the gut communities. And so what I thought was, well, the MetaHit study studied just the gut, and we had these 18 body sites. So what I wanted to know is if we looked at the types of bacteria across these 18 body sites, do we see different types across the body? Um, are they similar to each other across the body? And then can I explain why I might be gut community type A and you might be gut community type B? And so this, this ability to categorize people into different community types for any body site um, I think it's going to be a very powerful tool for understanding health and disease. And again, this is kind of one of the first steps in, in moving down that path. Previous work had shown that the, the bacteria in our mouth are very different than the bacteria in our gut. And so one of the things we found by assigning people's communities to these community types was that the, even though the communities and the types of bacteria are very different, the type of bacteria you have in your mouth can predict the type of bacteria you have in your gut. And so to me, this is exciting because it suggests that, you know, if we want to manipulate the gut, perhaps we can manipulate the mouth. And that there's some data coming from various other labs unrelated to this project, finding in people with colon cancer, high levels of bacteria that are known to be pathogenic and common in periodontal disease. And so if we better understood how those bacteria get to the gut, or again, how we can manipulate the mouth to manipulate the gut, that might be pretty cool too. One of the ways that this study has helped advance the field of microbiome research is this idea that the bacterial communities that are found across the human body can be associated with each other. Again, the mouth being connected to the gut or your left and right arm, and that we can relate those to kind of your life history. And then going forward, what my lab is interested in and others at the University of Michigan and others around the world is, are there certain community types at different body sites that we can relate to health? One of the great things about where we're at at the University of Michigan is that there's a real big push now to study the human microbiome. And so within the School of Medicine, we have the Host Microbiome Initiative, where there's a large number of faculty, 50 or so, interested in the role of bacteria in maintaining health. It's a really exciting time to be at the University of Michigan because we've got a lot going on and there's a lot of excitement in this area of research, both within the biomedical world as well as across campus.